Come on in, Joe, and then we'll move on. Hey, good morning. How are y'all? I'm fine, Joe. Talk to me, my brother. Oh, man. Um, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's not talk about Trump because that, that is what the establishment media wants you to That's all they want you to think about. But um, um, really, it said, somebody said climate change. And and, um, and I, I saw a graph the other day. You know, of course, you we're inundated um, via the establishment media in all its forms with the idea that, that the world is burning and catching on fire. And this is the hottest year on record. Well, what they're not telling you and what you can look up on NASA's own website is that water moisture is 30% higher in the atmosphere this year because of a volcano that erupted in the South Pacific and threw just huge clouds, huge volumes of H2O into the, into the atmosphere. And that's, and that, that has, um, has made this year a little uh, warmer than normal. There's that, and, there, and there's also this graph they'd like to show around of the last 10 or 20,000 years climate. Well, I challenge you to, to Google and find this um, this, this um, graph that, um, that you can find if you just Google the last 500,000 years climate. The last 500,000 years of climate. More data, right? Bigger, longer timeline. If you look at it, you'll see that you'll see that um, you know there's some dramatic swoops upward, and then it comes back down, and it goes for a few tens of thousands of years, and then it goes up, and then it trickles down for tens of thousands of years, and it goes up, and it trickles down for tens of thousands of years, and it does that about I don't know twelve or fifteen times, and then it goes up, and and that's where we are right now, right? That's now. And if you look at it in context of the last 500,000 years, well, is that out of line? No. This is a normal pattern that's been going on for half a million years, and, and the data is right in front of you. But, you know, that doesn't sell electric cars, and that doesn't transform the economy and take money from one set of people and give it to another set of oligarchs. So, you know, we're just not going to... Okay, gonna Joe, about. you know, Joe, first of all, let me let you know that a lot of what you said is actually correct, all right? Now, now, now that I've said that, let me tell you what some of the issues are with climate change. Uh, do you know what gradients are and, and the, uh, the speed in, speed in, in gradients as well, right? Um, you are correct that we do go in cycles. We go in cycles of freezing and warming, et cetera. But what we have reached is a cycle where humanity exists because, again, the, the, uh, we're, we're exists. What, what has happened for humanity to exist? We have done things like turn all those dead animals from millions of years and dead trees from millions of years. We've turned them into sequestered carbon, which leaves a particular balance in the air that you know that 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 is maintained now it is true that over time if uh, without man's control things like the forests and these other things will eventually burn again throw more carbon in the air and we'll go through all kinds of cycles again what we are saying those of us who not only believe in man-made climate change notice we're saying man-made climate change we realize that we are having an impact that speed up or slow down certain things and the question that i that i put out there is is it in our best interest to continue speeding things up in the cycle where we cannot adjust economics to run with what we are doing to climate? Can we adjust the, to the severity of these particular events that occur? So, I mean, uh, what happens in a lot of times is that when we are arguing these issues, we, we polarize ourselves and we allow the plutocrats like, in other words, you are with one set of plutocrats and it might seem like I'm with another set of plutocrats in that I want electrical energy, I want renewable energy, you are probably just fine with uh, fossil fuels because, hey, it's there and it's cheap and we can burn it at will. We shouldn't be in that kind of contention as I see it. We should be what oh. is best. Alberto. Yes, sir. I got, my, I got my hand up for a second. I want to just interject one thing. Yes, You're go ahead. Equation. You're missing half the equation, okay? And and as I drive around the northeast side of Houston, I see that other side of that equation. It's just glaringly simple. It's everywhere you go. What is the really, other side, sir? It, it, 
It's these solar powered carbon sequestration units that we yes. we allow to be destroyed all around us in mass. What is that? It's tree. It's called Thank a tree. You. Yes. And 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 it's a solar powered carbon sequestration device. But it's, it's, Joe. It, it, Joe, let me stop you because I got to go to Gonzalo. But let me stop you. You're right on that again. But let me just tell you because we did the math, right? The amount of trees that are necessary based on growth rates to cover the amount of additional cars and carbon producing things that we need, we, we are so far exceeding that you're correct that that is a, one of the best sequestration forms. Another sequestration form that is becoming carbonic right now is the oceans. The oceans are one of the biggest absorbers of carbon, but uh, carbon plus H2O, what does it create again? Carbonic acid. And what is carbonic acid doing to our animals? It's Go ahead. Carbolic acid, carbolic acid. It's right. So go ahead. So therefore, what, what I'm saying, Joe, is the following. We shouldn't be discussing and fighting about this issue as it's, it's, it's a polarization thing. You and I should be sitting down and say, how best to convert the economy from doing a net positive and throwing things up into the air that will, in fact, I think we'll all agree, modify climate. And how can we have a smaller imprint to make sure that gradients are smaller? That's all I'm saying, sir. And I think if we can get there and stop the the the, the ridiculous fight that the oil companies would like us to have and others would like us to have, we will have them. I don't want to get rid of oil. I mean, we use oil for more than just burning, brother. But, you know, but we have to get in some equitable place. Don't you agree that we have to come somewhere close to that? I do. And you, we should also recognize that the place that we're in right now, uh, as far as the data goes, is not that exceptional. It, I mean, uh, like well, well, let me stop you with there for a second. It's not exceptional. Wait, Joe, listen to me. Listen to me on this one. I, I need you to understand this one. It's not exceptional over 10,000 years. It is exceptional over a hundred years. That's all I'm saying. If you take, and that is what I wish more scientists would just come out and say, that we can say this honestly. The, the problem isn't that this stuff wouldn't occur. If you look at it in the cycle over 10,000 years, hey, I get you, brother. But when we're talking about these changes over short times, that is when, I, when engineers talk about, we don't want large gradients. We don't want large gradients because bad things occur in large gradients. That's all. So, uh, so I'm with you that these changes occur over time, and I'm also uh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you also that we are in a sweet spot for humanity when we had that amount of carbon sequestration that we no longer have. And I'm saying this change occurs in a in a small amount of time. So if your fight should be, in my opinion, go ahead and talk about planting the trees. Go ahead and talking about we don't have to go crazy and just cut. Uh, cut oil like yesterday, but we have to do things in a manner that says we're going there. And eventually, I think we're going to have to have some sort of a and um, the environmentalists. Some of my environment friends gonna kill me here, but I think we're going to have to have some sort of a nuclear carbon sequestration process. In other words, we can't use oil to sequester carbon, but we can use nuclear to sequester. But again, I haven't thought this particular thing out. I'm just saying. Anyway, I got to go to Gonzalo. Give me a quick closer, Joe. Hey, Joe? The quick closer is, um, yeah, quit, quit, quit using climate change as a club to just beat beat everything with. I don't right? think, uh, okay, you know, Joe, I'm sorry. I want you to, I, I want you, uh, Joe, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do me a favor. Instead of looking at climate change, folks that are beating your brow with as a, as a, a cushion, Let's uh, let's try to create that kind of a bridge, really, because you are a thinking person and more so than those folks that just say oil, oil, oil. So you can yeah, be a bridge. Raise it, raise it another level. Here, raise it to another level. These are just these are issues. The issue now right. is pro-establishment versus anti-establishment. Uh, now, you and I, you and I can drink coffee on that because we agree we can drink coffee on that. OK. Yep. Well, I got Thank you, brother. Have a good one, guys. See ya. Peace out. All right.
we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.